Emre's opponent, Francesco Mangione, if I am not mistaken, is on Sprite, a deck that we have seen a lot on stream lately in this tournament. And I gotta say, I'm really happy about that. There are so few cards in the game that are cooler than Sprite Blue. Yeah, definitely Sprite, still a very viable deck. And something I'm really surprised to see, honestly, is the approach that Francesco took to his Sprite deck list. Because if I look at the list, there's so many hand interactions. It's like already seven bestials, but on top of that, I see Triple Ash, Triple Veiler, Triple Imprim, Triple Nibiru. So that's just a bunch of interactions on the opponent's turn, but he won't need them right now because he will be starting off here. He goes first and he starts it off with Sprite Starter into Sprite Blue. I mean, this deck basically looks like the Sprite versions that were played when the deck was released. Yeah, indeed. Like an older version of the deck. So we go Blue, Jet. Jet is going to fetch us either the Sprite Smashers or the Double Cross if he plays it. And yes, he indeed plays it. So that might as well be the card he is searching for here. But no, we do go for the Smashers instead. Maybe he already has Double Cross. Maybe he knows what he is playing against and figures that if he has the Fluandaries map, then I would rather want to have Smashers. That is absolutely a pretty uh, decent decision. And also, a couple of the cards I just mentioned are just great to have versus Flanderies, yeah. honestly. Effect Veiler, Ash Blossom, Impermanence, all of those can really stop the Flanderies deck from, from going off. And if you have multiple of those in your opening hand, there's basically no real chance that Amra can ever play through this. Ash is rather a difficult card against the Flanderies deck because you really have to use it on the first thing that happens if your opponent just starts with a Rubina. If he has map plus Rubina, then the uh, Rubina is going to be chain blocked, so you cannot Ash the card. That is true. On the other hand, if you get to resolve Ash, it is actually resolving. Because yeah. uh, on the other hand, when you compare it to Impermanence and Veiler, those can be dodged by the quick play spell of the uh, Floandries theme. Yeah. And therefore, they are quite a bit of there's quite a bit of danger connected to using those, because they can just be dodged somehow. Although there are no dangers in this game. Yeah, that's so true. Nessie is not that strong right now. <laughs> not really. We haven't seen a lot of dangers lately even though they have been reprinted in the Dark World Structure deck. So, looks like we have our perfect setup of um, Totally Awesome here, plus Bright Elf, just what we like to see. And honestly, when we do go for that setup, it's even more likely that he started with Double Cross, because yeah. when you have access to Totally Awesome and the Sprite Elf, you could use both of the effects of Double Cross, and therefore Double Cross is amazing, and I think I saw a trap card in his opening hand, so I do believe we are going for the perfect end board here of Totally Awesome being able to be reused by Sprite Elf and also by Double Cross, because there's Double Cross and Smashers being set to the back row right there. Look, one back row, two back row, is there even, an oh wow, it's even free back row so it's not only smashers and double cross but also something on top of it even elf plus toad that can just easily re-summon the toad after it was sent to the graveyard this is making me happy i have been missing this board to be honest yeah and uh emre actually decided to main deck evenly matched which is a blowout card versus tier elements or kashira yeah. because they usually don't really have any uh protective cards against that maybe, no real maybe negate. Crime once yeah but while. game one that's not really that much of a thing because most people have decided to cut that from the main deck yeah. um but versus this sprite deck specifically evenly matched is not that great because they will have multiple hard negates the one sits pretty well on the board already totally awesome and uh it's going to be reused most of the time by the Sprite player if you don't have a way to clear it out of the graveyard somehow. Also, Emre is of course running the Dimension Shifter, which he did not have access to in this first turn of Francesco. So there is one card that is not going to be used at all anymore in this deck, which is sitting in his main deck. That is true. So <laughs> we're reading our own map. Interesting decision right there. But yeah, we try to use the effect of map. And honestly, that already could take away one of the normal yeah. summons for Embrace. So I would personally always think we are trying to negate that in some way, either by smashering it or by using totally awesome ones. Smashers in this situation is a bit dangerous because you would have to chain the elf to it, otherwise you are going to get rid of one of your very important cards. Ooh, you're right. And it also means that we cannot reborn totally awesome with it anymore. Also, the other problem is that I would have rather activated elf before, summon out a blue or a jet, get the effect, and then on that resolve I would activate smashers and not wait for the magnificent map to be activated. 
That is true. So we are special summoning the angler, banishing it and the map. And maybe Emre knew all that is going to happen and still holds evenly matched in his hand. So he was like, hey, he's definitely going to get rid of my field spell. So evenly matched could still be a thing, but there comes Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse indeed will bait out the negate here from Totally Awesome. And again, they could still be evenly matched waiting. Don't forget about Totally Awesome's effect that it can set down the cards. Oh, Ooh. Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring on the Book of Eclipse. That is a nice play because the effect involves drawing cards in the end phase. However, if he had tributed Totally Awesome to set down the Book of Eclipse, he could easily out a possible board of Empen plus Statue. Yeah, that would have been kind of nice. Now we are going for the quick spell, banishing the Aglan. And I think it's another starter that Francesco has set. And starter is also so good because you could just summon out a carrot or a rat easily. This one just makes sense right now because if you banish the Aglan in hand to search out a Robina, there is a huge problem that you always chain block your Robina and you cannot negate the effect. That is true, and I mean, there's still Double Cross set, and now there is the activation of Double Cross, meaning that we could just have another negate, and I don't think Emmer has that many cards left in his hand, because this activation of the Quick Spell actually was a minus one. He had to use the Quick Play itself, and yeah. then also banish the Eglin, and therefore that is kind of rough, because that was a pretty good trade-off for Francesco. So we had the map. Then we had Book of Eclipse, then we had Aglan plus Adventure. So there should be two cards left. We have one set card that could become a carrot or a red, and we still have Totally Awesome on the field. So two cards left for Emre to play through this powerful board. Indeed it is. So Emre, how are we approaching this? He's thinking about it quite nervously. And there comes Aglan, which is not really the normal summon you want there, because you already had access to Aglan in your banish pile. So therefore, you would have preferred to have Rubina there, of course. But at least you have a chance here to chain block Aglan in that scenario. Exactly. You can add back the Aglan immediately. But the thing is, you would need another Floandri's monster in your hand to actually do something with the tribute monster you're searching out here. Otherwise, you cannot summon it that turn. Oh, and we have Robina in hand wow. as well. But the thing is, you can just now negate the Robina because there's nothing uh, yep. being there to chain block it in any way. You can just go after oh, it with Totally Awesome. Yeah. And that is what Emre also realizes right there. So Francesco takes game number one over Emre. Sprite wins over Floan de Ries. Uh, honestly, Quickly. a couple of months ago, that was like a super standard matchup. But for this tournament specifically, we expected other matchups to really be in top competition. But here they are. <laughs> It's really nice to see those decks yeah. again, even with Kashtira and Telemans still around. For Kashtira sure. is going to be a really strong deck going forward into the next format. Telemans also will have to see if it can compete with the other decks, because there will be some changes. But Sprite and Fluwanderies also, they're going to be changed after this event. For sure, absolutely. And uh, when I look at the list of Amra, the first thing we already talked about briefly in the first game is that his main deck is pretty much orientated towards going second because there are yeah. Book of Eclipse in there, we saw yeah. that, we talked about evenly matched, so all of those cards most likely are going to go out of the deck now that he's going first, but there are other pretty, po pretty powerful cards he can get in for that. There's Solemn yeah. Judgment, all-time favorite, we all love Solemn Judgment. And one of the best trap cards in the game if you are able to resolve it, Harpy's Feather Storm. Yep, no monster effects for your opponent if you resolve that card, so setting this up is pretty, pretty decent. I think the rest of the side deck is not really something you want to have versus uh, Sprite, at least in a going first situation. Yeah. But there are Dark Rulers in there, so if we go second, maybe in a potential game three, that could be quite impactful there as well. And therefore, I think we're up here for a treat. And let's see, because something pretty interesting now, that everybody didn't think about Flu anymore, because everybody was like, hey, I have to prepare for Kashira, I have to prepare for T Elements, but did he bring any side deck options for the flu matchup now because zombie world was a staple in most of people's side deck but did he find any solutions for that matchup i'm looking and i see some book of eclipse honestly is one yeah. that is not really targeted towards the floor Reese deck but rather the kashtira deck but funnily enough it works pretty well versus floor Reese, to be honest 
That is indeed true, and also the triple tactic talents. If your yeah. opponent normal summons a lot on your turn, then you can always go for the talents and maybe take one monster or get two extra draws. Also, Harpy's Feather Duster oh, yeah, is course. a really strong card because this deck also does not summon any negates to the field. But we are going to see how this plays out in game number two. smiling at the camera, shaking his head after this quick loss in game one. He is up for it. He wants to take this down and advance to top 16. Yeah, the last feature match he played, if I remember correctly, was also versus Sprite, funnily enough, in Dortmund. And that was a pretty wild match in which he came out on top. But let's see whether he will be able to come out on top here as well. And so. starting it off with Prosperity certainly is not a bad thing because uh, just looking at the top six cards of your deck is definitely something that could help you out. And there's a guaranteed <laughs> map there. I can guarantee you those three cards will result in map. But there's oh. also Featherstorm. Both of the trap cards, but are also powerful, are in his opening hand if he wants them now. However, there is not a single card starter in there. I mean, those are six cards that can't be in his hand, so the likelihood of a Robina or a good Eglin in his hand they are really high, but okay, he takes Harpy's Featherstorm, so apparently he has something to play with. Yep, he wants to set up Harpy's Featherstorm here. And versus Sprite specifically, that is just a really good card to set up. The only thing that could be really good against Harpy's Featherstorm is if you don't put a big board behind that, and you just summon out two Sprites, overlay them, and you go into a Zeus. Yeah, because you don't necessarily need to resolve the effect of Zeus in that particular turn. Ooh, I think Ash Blossom on this could have really hurt, but there is no Ash Blossom because usually the Ash Blossom would have already been used yeah. on the Pot of Prosperity for six, but now he gets his way into the Ferrandaries map anyways using the Advent of Adventure there. That is strong for Emre. He has access to Happy's Featherstorm. He has access to the Field Spell. This is really what he likes to see. Revealing Aglin in hand, also grabbing himself a Robina, if I would have to guess. So that's looking beautiful for him. So now you can extra normal summon the Aglin, add back the Robina, also search for an Empen. And we are seeing Ooh. the effect, Vela. Now, Emre, after already having used the Adventure, is not able to dodge this one, but this was just his additional normal summon, so another normal normal summon can be done with yeah. Robina that was just added to the hand. That is true. Basically, the only thing this has accomplished now is that he's not going to get to the Barrier Statue. He can search out Barrier Statue he's with also not Robina going to there. Get to the much more important Yeah, the Empen. Empen also. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But because normally you would search for the Barrier Statue and then at yeah. the end also yeah. normal summon this, but he only had one more normal summon to give there. So he decides to not even normal the Robina at all and just pass on yep. the Eglin. And now the play you were talking about is looking really, really, really good because he might as well just go for Zeus here and then in the turn after profit off of that Zeus. The problem is the map is still on the field, so you would need to have a starter or another way to special summon out a level 2 monster so you can get into Ooh, your... Oh, okay. Book of Eclipse will force Emre to activate the Harpy's Featherstorm here. Yeah. Which is fine for him, I would think. I think so too. Because that card would have most likely been activated anyways. I really... I don't know how good that was, because you can actually just normally summon out a monster and let your opponent have all of his play, summon out Empen, summon out the Barrier Statue, and then use Book of Eclipse to book them and just continue playing. The problem is, then you also do not have a monster that is face up on the board anymore, so you don't have a level 2 monster to extend further, so that maybe that was the problem he was facing there. That is indeed true. But so far it's all only guessing. And I mean, if he had starter that you were, uh, w where you were thinking about, if you use starter, you obviously cannot get into Zeus anymore. So that would have also yeah. been kind of a, yeah. uh, contradictionary, and therefore, it's really hard here, I think, for Francesco. Even though the end board didn't look impre impressive at all, because it was just Eglin in terms of monsters, it is still quite hard to break for Francesco here. Harpy's Feather Dome, a card that just buys you a turn. 
absolutely most of the time does. So, Francesco, how are we doing this? Got to come up with a solution here. Maybe he now also realizes, hmm, why did I even activate that Book of Eclipse? But yes, he has Sprite Starter. Okay, that is a start. That gives him access to a level 2 monster on board. So all the Sprite monsters in his hand are potential special summons as well, because those obviously don't activate and just special summon himself onto the field. But how far can we get here? Because which exceeds monster does anything? You can argue for going Gin Buster and then not attacking over the Eglin, so at least take the battle phase away from your opponent. Yeah, I like that. That's not too bad. Because if he wants to normal summon Robina before, I mean, he can just activate map and then. Yeah, Robina, true. It doesn't really help no. that much. You're right. I think it would be perfect for him if he has either red or carrot hard draw on here, because those could be good. Okay, he just, just wants to attack over it so he doesn't get the extra draw and then pass, probably. Yep, we're running over the Eglin. Oh, okay, we are checking whether that card would even be banished, but I think when you attack a monster, it is going to be face up at some yep. point anyhow, so the Eglin will definitely end up being in the banished oh. pile. And then we have a Cosmic Cyclone on Talons as well. So that card would have been a bluff, but it was taken off by Emre. And Emre now having all the options available to himself again. And yes. yeah, I think we are just picking up our cards. Emre going first, had a much, much stronger game than his first one was. And we have an equal score here now in top 32. It is one for Emre and his birds, and is one for Francesco and his Sprite Monsters. Francesco is now in a commanding situation. We have looked at the deck of Emre. The oh, first, yeah. the, the main deck is primarily to go second, to win games going second, but not against Sprite. It's Book of Eclipse and it's evenly matched. And both those cards just trade one for one versus a totally awesome. If your opponent with 19 hand interactions in his deck opens just with a starter, he can set up totally awesome yeah. with two activations because of the elf and also a double cross. So there is a lot that he can do. I think a really crucial card for Emre is going to be Dark Ruin No More here. Yeah. If he manages to draw that card, that could just blow out the entire board that maybe, hopefully, Francesco is going to establish. And uh, that could really hurt. And then that evenly matched we were talking about could just be so much better. So if you pair those cards together, evenly matched could still be a blowout card here, even in game two. But let's see whether there's anything crazy coming in going first for Francesco, actually. Um, we saw he cited the tactics, decided to bring them in. He's probably going to keep them, I would assume, yeah. because Dimension Shifter is a card that usually is being used on something and not m that much anymore in the standby phase already. Therefore, it will most likely be live. He has seen talents, though. He has seen it, that's true. So he may as well yeah. use them in standby phase, man. Yeah, it's actually a little bit of a difficult decision there. Also, I think he is going to continue playing Book of Eclipse. Probably, and yeah. Talents and Harpy's Feather Duster because you just can't use the Bestials. I would think so too. You definitely have to get rid of the Bestials because there is, besides the Dimension Shifter, not really anything you want to hit with it. So I'm really excited to see. What is your guess? Do you think, the, think the cool looking Thunder Monsters are going to take it or are you more of a bird lover? I really love these Sprite Monsters. Those lightnings are really strong, and if you set up double totally awesome, I think that you have more than what it needs. I know, you, you were pretty much a sprite enjoyer from the beginning. Yep. You picked it up quite early, and I gotta say, I'm really, I'm liking the Flo Andres monsters, I'm liking the birds. I always say to my friends that are running the deck that they should keep up with it, that is actually a fun deck to play, and also quite a good deck for beginners to pick up on, because the first stuff, it's, it's normal summoning. Like, a normal summon is the first thing you will learn in Yu-Gi-Oh! So that will be the first summon you can do, and uh, Flo Andres is just working with that summoning mechanic most of the time, and therefore it's a pretty good thing to have for me as a beginner. I'm not that much of a beginner anymore, mm. some people would think it, but I'm, I'm actually uh, progressing quite fast <laughs> now with my ninja deck that I picked up this weekend. <laughs> that is true, you are now a primary ninja enjoyer, yeah. but we know that both of these players are ready to go into oh, yeah. game three of this decider in top 32. There we have them. Emre and Francesco looking to the judges, being informed that it is allowed to start now. They have plenty of time, half an hour here. So we had a couple of matches that were taking quite a while, but this one is going quick. I cannot even see this going into timeout in any potential way, to be honest.
that is true. Both decks usually set up boards that the opponent cannot break. And now Swap Frog is oh. summoned and immediately mm. activated. And you know what? I don't think he's fearing a Ghost Ogre or a Gamma here. Nope, and I don't think we are going to see a Dimension Shifter here either, because that would have oh. probably been activated there. And there's Sprite Blue in his hand as well, so we are going to get our Sprite engine going as well. This is the absolute opposite of a brick that, has, uh, that Francesco has here. Yeah. He can really go off there. Sprite Blue is my favorite. Yep. I can't lie. It's my absolute favorite. Now he just has to be careful not to link away the Swap Frog for the Elf, because then he can't summon Totally Awesome anymore. We have Double Cross here, and this is already the end bot that we are looking for without even summoning Gigantic Sprite. That is really, really good. And uh, through the Gigantic, we could even get into Gin Buster as well. Yep. And that's an even that's even an additional negate. Or we could also set up Carrot, Red. Both of them are pretty versatile in the matchup, in the uh, Floanderese matchup. And therefore, they're definitely helpful. So let's see which route Francesco decides to take here. Is there any route at which you really need to go for a sprint here? That's OK, Ooh. so we are having the starter already really strong. Starter now as well. So Starter most likely is going to get us carried, right? Or or he goes for red. I, I was about to say, what would you think is the better choice in that matchup? What is more important versus Flo and Reese? Is it carried or is it red? I like carried more versus red. That's what I thought too, because the monster effects are so easily yeah. chain blockable, but exactly. uh, the spell cards you cannot really spell block yeah. at uh, You cannot chain block at all. So this isn't okay. So we are going into the sprite sprint. So we're going to send Nimble Angler to the graveyard now. Special summon out two Nimble Beavers, and one of them is going to make a gigantic sprite together with sprite sprint. Yep, that will absolutely be the case. And that's a big sprite sprint that is going to be, or like rather a big gigantic with a sprite sprint as a material there. 3,200 attack points. That is certainly helping. So detaching the Nimble Beaver. And do we just go for Carrot and Red here, potentially, even? Indeed, yeah. we are. We have Carrot and Red. So we did not have to decide between the two. We could just go for both of them. So Nimble Beaver, I can already tell you something. Nimble Beaver and Gigantic Sprite are going to make a Sprite Elf 99% of the time, summon back the Swap Frog, and then going for a totally awesome that is untargetable, as is the Sprite Red. Yeah, but honestly, with this setup, Francesco basically commits all of his resources into his end board. Yeah. I think he's going to end up on one or maybe zero hand car hand, uh, cards in hand even. Two, right? So, or, okay, maybe even two. But, but definitely he commits a lot into his yeah. end board. So if he gets Dark Rulers here, all of his interruptions are going to be gone, most likely. And then an evenly matched would be crazy. So that specific combination here would just be super, super, super strong for Emra. He still has the totally awesome, and then he's able to use the double cross if he actually gets Dark Ruler, because totally awesome can still tribute itself for cost to try to negate something. It will not resolve because it was negated by Dark Ruler, but then you can just special summon it back by double cross. That is true. So there are still a couple of ways for Francesco to recover, even if he gets hit with one of those also powerful board breakers. Okay, Francesco confirming something that Emre asked. Ooh, it looks like Emre oh. drew the Dimension Shifter for turn. I mean... That is actually it is not okay. that bad. Yeah, it's actually okay because the Totally Awesome is not going to end up in the graveyard in any scenario here in that turn. So that is helping a little bit at least. Oh, but oh! It may as well go yeah. into the graveyard because <laughs> we are chaining Sprite Red there. First, you thought that carrot has to be banished, but no, we are negating the dimension shifter, in fact. But I think that this use of Sprite Red is quite good because we were talking about the effects being chain blocked easily. So, if you can get a possible interruption out, then this works because he has basically triple toad negate on field, and with the dimension shifter, it would be less. Yeah, I think in that scenario that we're in right now we are taking one for one trades we are happy going one for one yep. trades and that was exactly what we had there we used the red negate to get rid of the shifter oh there comes book of eclipse that's another card but most likely we'll have to force out a one yep. for one trade here with the totally awesome and i'm a big fan of setting that to to your side of the field even though we have already seen that francesco has one himself oh but we are okay so far, there's no monster on the side of Emrys, so we cannot reborn the Totally yep. Awesome just yet. So going into 
even the match tier. Uh, no, yeah. Oh, oh okay, you can but you can't be born with double cross. Yeah. True, we can go that route first. He could have waited for the battle phase to be announced and then at the start of battle phase activate Sprite double cross to summon back the Toad. Yeah, maybe that is exactly what happened. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe that happened. Oh, there's Favaduster. That's another card that most likely is just going to bait out another negation of Totally Awesome, if I would have to guess. I don't think so. You're going to get rid of one Book of Eclipse, and I don't oh, think I would... It's actually yeah. a Book of Eclipse himself as well. He has one of Amaranth and one of his own. I don't think that he is going to trade a Totally Awesome Negate versus Book of Eclipse. No, he does not. This is just another <laughs> card. <laughs> yeah, you can have trade. my Book of Eclipse instead. <laughs> Some old school trading happening on yeah. the board right now. Want to have a rarity upgrade? There you go, bro. <laughs> I'm taking the top 16 spot instead, though. And this is a crucial point because now you have to basically decide. Do I want to tribute Toad for that? You can set it to your field, which is great. Well, if you don't negate it, then probably a Dark Ruler no more will come down. Yeah, you don't want to give your opponent this card. So Toad is going to tribute and set the Yeah, Emery is just checking whether you could set multiple cards per turn, but yes, you can. That Prod of Prosperity is now on the side of Francesco. And there comes normal summon barrier statue, so that at least prevents the special summon yeah. effect of Sprite Elf. But what are we doing after it, though? Oh, there comes oh. Effect Veiler, though. Effect Veiler on the barrier statue. And now the Reborn for Totally Awesome. That is strong stuff there from the Francesco. Now Francesco is absolutely blank here. There is a pass. The barrier statue is the only thing left on Emerald's board. Francesco can now normal summon Beaver. Decides against it because you know what? You can't use the effect as long as the barrier statue is on the field. There is the possibility to just normal summon it for some damage. I think that is strong 200 damage on board here. Yeah, 400. that definitely was worth Actually. it. Oh, but and there, there is, is a fist bump. A fist bump. That is our top 16 contestant now, Francesco taking it down with the Sprite deck. So maybe it's just going to be another Euro uh, YCS won by the Sprite deck. Yeah, he did a phenomenal job right there. Not getting baited by the Harpy's Feather Duster. Seeing the Barrier Statue and calmly dropping the Effect Veiler to negate the effect, saying, I want my Toad, I get my Toad, summoning it, ba summoning it back and then seeing the pass immediately. But let's be honest, the hand of Emre didn't consist of any of the Flo and the Reese monsters. Therefore, he would have had a hard time to play through this anyhow. Like, that part of prosperity was crucial to resolve, so it was definitely heads up yeah. by Francesco to negate it. It was absolutely necessary because it could have given Emre the option to actually have Engine in his hand. Oh, imagine the shifter wasn't the sixth card. Oh, this would have been, been so, so good. good for Emre because this Toad would not have been on the field. That actually, shifter was, actually, it would have, would have been on the field, but it couldn't stick because he had the Swap Frog as a normal summon. Then you just summon your blue and your jet, and then you summon out another Swap Frog from the deck. You don't have to activate the first one. But I mean, you but are. But then Toad is not that good. Probably, though, you are going to chain the Dimension Shifter to the activation of Swap Frog. Most likely. That's what I would think because. If you don't drop it in standby phase, because we have seen the triple tactic talents. True. That is actually yeah. a thing. Would have been, uh, yeah, somewhat of an interesting decision there. We would have not been certain about what is exactly going to happen. But I'm certain about what's going to happen next. We have Ed Ready with our winner. So let's hear from our first top 16 contestant, Francesco. And Ed, please hear for the winner's interview. As you said, Basti, the first top 16 contender from our feature match is right here, winning that top 32. Francesco, congratulations. Top 16, how do you feel? Yes, I'm so happy. And uh, now I'm more quiet because I'm more afraid from uh, Flo Wanderers is my, my most counter my of my deck but uh, I, um, I um, you had a good round like that went very well for you. He had, uh, had uh, two round first round and the third uh, very good end versus him he can't do any anything well yeah we'll talk about that because that game three was incredible to watch and again hearing the crowd yes. cheer at some of those moments because you had an answer for everything but we'll come to that in a second game one there was the book of eclipse but then you ashed it Oh, sorry, there was the, uh, yeah, book of the, there was a number of different interactions. You just have full control. So, again, there's nothing they could do, so they scoop. So, in that against Flu, 
how are you feeling when you have control in game one? Uh, I'm, it's good because, uh, but it's important to warn uh, the dice. <laughs> in fact, I did 12 and I was so happy. I asked to the judge if he can uh, give me the, these dice. <laughs> <laughs> They're really lucky dice for you. They've served you well. Game two, slightly different case. There was the Harpy's Featherstorm from Emre on your book of Eclipse. Francesco, you managed to bait out Cosmic Cyclone with the set TTT. And then you decided to scoop because he was about to gain an advantage. He was just about to start. And so did you just go, there's nothing I can do here. Let's get to game three. Yes, I tried to do to use Eclipse. So in, in this way, you can't activate his trap, but he didn't chain and I can't do anything after that. And then, yeah, we got into that game three, which like you said, incredibly exciting. You just had an answer for everything. So you built a huge negate field, turn one. You were ready, especially with the, the toad and everything, ready to just go. There was a dimension shifter, but you were immediately chained Sprite Red and negated that. Then you had the entire thing where you, you stole and negated the Book of Eclipse. Yes. Then he harpied Feather Dust at that. Yes. And then both of them were set in Book of Eclipses and then they just disappeared. Uh, because I had, uh, with my board, I, I had control of the game. No, no, no need to did uh, this, uh, this Eclipse. I prefer to negate other things. Well, yeah, you negated the barrier statue of the Stormwind, which ended up coming out. With the Whaler. In this way, I can uh, summon again uh, totally. <laughs> I mean, that's the last time you're going to have to deal with that card because it's all, you know, it's going on the forbidden list as of tomorrow. So we're not going to be seeing barrier statue anymore. But that was the moment, that was clearly, that was the last ditch effort. Again, you just had an answer for everything, and then he conceded. And now here you are, top 16. You feeling good? Yes. <laughs> I'm okay. so happy. What do you, what do you, now, because you said you were a bit worried about flu, and that's your, that's the date that's been a bit countery. Is there anything in the top 16 that you're nervous about going up against, or is it going to be fairly clean sailing for you from here? Um, the only deck that uh, I had the fear is uh, Flow Under. Is the other, I, with my side, I can uh, I can play with the other deck, uh, not versus my Flow Under. Confident, oh. confident. Okay, that's someone who knows how to deal with it. So you dealt with the flu, which is the only thing that you have a problem with, and now here you are, top 16. Congratulations, Francesco, very happy for you. We'll see how you fare for these next couple of rounds, but getting top 16 at YCS Leon, very exciting. Well done. Guys, don't go anywhere, because we're going to have even more content for you before before we get to the top 16 matches. Be right back.